This conference will now be recorded. My scripture is coming from Ephesians chapter 4, starting at verse 1. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be mm -hmm. completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. Amen. Uh, dear God and Eternal Father, we thank you today, O oh God, for this opportunity to come and to hear your word and to share in your word. God, we ask that you would open up our hearts and our ears, God, to hear it, receive it, and then to apply it. Father, we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> and um do, do you get the um the slides that I think you say I meant to ask you that. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. You can bring it up at any time. Okay. <clears throat> wow. All right. <laughs> All right, Reverend Bonner. I wanted to go back. Uh, I want to go back to the question. That you, what the other question there? The other question that you had last week. I want to go with that question. Know, it's, it's it's in there. It's like the fourth question. Here. Okay, all right. Let's move on. We'll go here. Does attending church? Go back. Does attending church physically matter? That's a question to you all. Why or why not? Doesn't matter if we come to church physically. Not not. Now, I'm not talking about Zoom and Facebook. I'm talking about physically show up at the church. Does it matter? Hmm. I can't hear you. I know. I can't be silent on this one. Come on now. Yes, it matters. <laughs> why does it matter? Why, why do you say it matters? Why does it matter? Um, well, one, because the Bible says it matters. Because, uh, you know, that that's... That that's our opportunity to fellowship, to strengthen each other, to strengthen each other, to support each other, um, to help each other in our walk, um, to help each other with our accountability. Um, so um, it's it's absolutely necessary for the strengthening of an individual's faith and the collective faith of the church. Okay. Anybody else? Well, I was formulating the opinion that we just spent a whole year and a half. Not going but into it's not important, but it is important. I mean, it's important that we assemble, as it says in God's uh -huh. word. But we did that for Zoom, Zoom too. Oh, I can hear me. I can hear you. Okay, yeah, we hear you now. But we did, we, we did, we, we didn't assemble physically, but we did assemble. If that makes any sense. And I, I know the question <laughs> says physically. I know it does, but we just spent a whole 18 months and we still were able to fellowship and not to the certain not to the same extent, I guess, but we were still able to do so. So I don't know. So so uh, when we look at when we look at Zoom and uh Facebook and YouTube, all that stuff who's on, do you feel do you feel connected to each other? As if before, do you feel the same connection? No. Yeah. 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 Um, uh -huh. I feel a part of, but I guess because mm, that's a hard one because I do participate, you know, at home by my computer, 
you know, yes. I'm singing along and I'm talking to you as, as, as the minister is speaking or whatever, but um, it is not the same as being there in person. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, I, I agree with Sister Diane. It's, it's something about when we're together that there's just like a, a connection we have, you know, when we're with one another. It's like that, that the absence of that really does. It's like, you know, it's like it does something to you versus when we're together and we can see each other, we can hug, we can kiss, we can, you know, and all yes. that good old stuff. Yeah. Yeah. From my point of view, I, I miss, I miss you. And I miss, like, as Tim has shared with us, the fellowship of us being with one another. And I think that, you know, I can preach, but I think I can give you the better encouragement when I see you, when I talk to you, when you're around me, versus a lot of times I'm, uh, on the YouTube, I can't see who I'm talking to, um, I, only those that, you know, those five I see in the audience. Um, and a lot of times I think, um, you know, I really do miss the assembly together of uh, believers. So I think, and I want us to stress that tonight, that it's important that we assemble. You know, I know we have this new way of doing things. Um, uh, I, I off and their Facebook off because they want the people to come to the church versus uh, watching on uh, YouTube. And I think I understand why, you know, we're still in the pandemic. And, uh, but I do, you know, I'm trying to be cautious but I think it's important that we do assemble, that we do assemble. We're gonna do it carefully with our mask on, but I think we do, I want us to do it uh, carefully, but I think it's, it's uh, in the scripture of what God would say. Can we go to the next screen? I think I gave a passage on that. I guess I didn't, okay. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have, come on, Diane, read for me. Therefore brothers, and sisters, therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promises is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Hold not on, giving Diane. Hold on, Diane. And let us consider how we must spur one another on. That's to encourage one another in love and in deeds. If we don't talk to each other, assemble or see each other, sometimes we don't take the time to call each other. So when we see each other, we're spurring one another on, it's another on to move, to say, okay, you can do this, you can get through this. Because I think uh, one of the things that um, uh, I experienced in the pandemic um, is that when somebody has lost a loved one, to call them on the phone or send them a text, for me, it's just so impersonal that, you know, um, I'm saying that I care about you, but I, the only way I can get to you is on, on the phone or text. Then there's no service. There's where you can go and try to comfort the family um, and be with the family. So to me, you know, to spur them on, to encourage them on, I think, you know, in situations like that, I find it very difficult. And then I think sometimes with, with the membership, there's some people that need to come to church that you can talk to them, that they can speak with you, encourage them to move forward. Versus uh, if I get to YouTube or if I get to Facebook, I will listen. But if I don't get there, then I'll move on with my life. So, but at a point in time when we come together assembly, I think it's uh, very important that we do that. Okay, Diane, continue. Verse 25, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit Okay, it went away. It's coming back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. 
as the approaching of his coming back, we want to encourage one another. Because even at this point here, I mean, if the pandemic has not disturbed you a little or bothered you a little or made you more aware of his coming back, I don't know what else it's going to take. Uh, because it ha should have made us feel, uh, think about, is God coming back based on what we experienced? Because, you know, one minute we see that we got through it, now it seems like it's getting worse. I mean, it seemed like you would think about, is the Lord on his way back? How soon? Versus my same behavior, I'm going to carry on. I ain't worried. He ain't coming back soon. And, you know, just to me, those things, uh, I, I see the day approaching. I don't know when. As scripture has told me, I don't know. But I'm looking for him because I know he's coming back for the church at some point. And I just want to, you know, spill to encourage others that in the midst of what we're going through, God truly is the answer. It is time to get closer to God and not, you know, go away from him. Because a lot of times I think we use other stuff. We're going away from God. I think we need to draw closer, closer to him. So in my, my conclusion on that, it is important that the church assemble. So I'm encouraging you to, to come back to church. Okay? In a safe manner. All right? Don't come back to church with 100 years. Fever and, and you got COVID. Don't do that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if you will, all right, come back. Everybody clear? Any comments on that? I'm, I'm going to tell on myself on this one because I'm not only a teacher, I'm, I'm also a student. And so when you gave me this scripture to go with your question, I didn't get, I got 25. I thought that correlated with it well, but that first, the first, a few verses, and I was like, well, where is he going with this? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, expre you explained it beautifully, but I'm just saying that I didn't get it. And I read it like <laughs> six or seven times. Okay. I see 25, but I don't see the rest. I truly thought you made a mistake. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. to be honest. But I'm glad you clarified it, though. I really am. Thank you so All right. Much. Amen. Amen. God be praised. God be praised. Okay. All right. I try. I could have just given you twenty five, but I wanted to kind of put it in this context. That's what I. That's why I gave you all that, Richard. Right. All right. Let's move. Any, any questions on that so far? So we must assemble, okay? All right. Any questions, comments, uh, disagreements on that? No. Okay. Let's move. All right. Next question. What does it mean when you use the word? Stewardship. So if I say to you, uh, stewardship, what does that say? What does, how would you define it? How do you describe that? How does that make you feel? What are you thinking about when you when you hear the word stewardship? Because the word actually stewardship is not in the Bible. Watch over, take care of. Watch over, take care of. Okay. Anybody else? Do you believe you're a steward? Yes. <laughs> Only one. Only Richard believes that he's a steward. Yes, y'all. What are y'all? Y'all are stewards. Uh, what is Richard a steward of? That's the question. Oh, there you um. go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother, brother Brown. Wow. <laughs> 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 So, so I want to look at this very closely uh, because we have to understand um, that we are stewards of God, all right? And what, when, I, when I think of the word stewardship, I think of somebody who's managing somebody other's property. Let me give you an example. I work for a company called John Stewart. John Stewart owns the property. I am the manager or the steward of it. I do not own the property. I only manage the property. Everybody understand? Mm -hmm. What I want you to understand tonight that God has called you to be a manager. You are not the owner. You do not own anything. Matter of fact, you don't even own your life. You accept him as Lord and Savior, and he became the ultimate sacrifice for your life. God is the owner. Are we there? Mm -hmm. I get any arguments. Anybody disagree? No. 
All right, here's since he's the only let's look at I want to look at a couple passages and we're, we're gonna move forward on this because I want to talk about a little bit about this. Colossians chapter one, verse 16. I know I didn't give you that, Richard. I know, I know I didn't give you that. All right, come on, Diane. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. All things. You were created okay. for his purpose. All right? You got to understand you were created for his purpose. In the Garden of Eden, I, I want to just go back there that Adam and Eve was created in the garden. What was their purpose to be in the garden? Well, Adam's purpose, was, well, one of his purposes would be to be the steward over the garden. To yep. tend to the garden. Animals and take care of the animals. That's right, to tend the garden. He was supposed to tend the garden. Now, what God did was that in the midst of the garden, he planted a tree there, a tree of oh. knowledge and good and evil. He told them, what about that tree? Do not what? Do not eat. Do not touch it. Do not, uh, yeah. do not touch that tree. Do not eat mm -hmm. from that tree. In other words, he reminded him by putting that tree that who's the owner? God. God is the owner. All right. So, so because if they were the owner, they could eat from any tree. Oh, mm -hmm. he told them, any tree you have, but not this one. Wow. He's trying to make them understand he was the owner. Mm -hmm. Are we understanding? Yes. Everybody don't understand so far. Mm -hmm. So if God is the owner, then Adam and, and Eve were the stewards. They, they were to monitor, to take care of. So if he made them, what about you and I? We ought to be stewards over God's stuff. One of my one of my my one of my definitions created by Kim Bonner, I think it says that. I'm a steward over everything God has placed in my hand. Yes, sir. Everything. Do you hear me? Everything. The place you rent, not your home. God has put this stuff in your hand for us to manage. It's important that we manage God's stuff properly. Everything. Everything. <laughs> Questions so far? Comments? All right. So I want you. I want you. Look. When we say, when I tell you manage, I want you to understand that it's important to maximize. Whatever God gave us, we are to maximize. I mean, give us our best effort for it. I just. I heard uh, just a great analogy uh, from Tony Evans uh, in regarding this. And I want you, I, I would have my reason tonight because I know we have other questions that we want to go over. But Tony uh, Evans deal with a passage in uh, Matthew, um, let's see my notes here. Matthew chapter, chapter 25, verses 14 through 29. Y'all read that the rest of this week, 14 through 29. It is the story of the talents. One was given five, one was given two, and I think the other was given five. Uh, a five, one, two, and five. I believe I got it right. If you look at those talents, they were given to, and that was dealing with money in that particular passage. It was to manage the money that the Lord has given you. So your money is not your own, but you are the manager of God's money. Everything we have belongs to God. I can't hear you, but I can't hear you. I'm stopping. Why are you listening? Amen. 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 Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I feel so much better. I tell you, I was talking to myself. Okay, so all right. If we are to manage everything, the, the, the text in that in Matthew deals with this. It says that one who had the two talents, you really got more. That's right. Mind. He did he, what God gave him, he maximized it. He did, he did better. Another one was had five. He did, he maximized also. He did mm -hmm. greater with it. My thing as stewards, what are we doing with the talent that God given us? Mm -hmm. Right. To sing, mm -hmm. to pray, to witness, 
to share the good news of Christ, to, to see the home we closing in. What are we doing? Are we maximizing even our own money? Because right. when we have money, are we investing our own money? Or are we doing with the guy who had only one? You take mm. it and you put it in a hole and you are buried it. That's right. I'm going to tell you, God is not, I got the text very closely, he is not happy with the one who buried it. He, he has, because what he did was he didn't maximize. So when we don't do what God asks us to do with the resources he gives us, the text says he takes them away. And he gives the ones who are going to maximize or use it for the glory of God. Yes, sir. Question, who's the owner? God. God. Who's the stewards? We, we are. are. All right. We are the stewards. Our responsibility as children of God is to do what God has told you to do with his stuff. He's given it to you, and you ought to be angry. So if you look at the text, the text goes on to say that when, when the, the man, the owner of the house comes back to mm -hmm. pick up his stuff, there are those who had done what God had given. If God come back tonight, what would he say about what he's given us? Wow. Have we added any increase as stewards? Mm -hmm. I, I want you to understand that you have a responsibility. You can't blame the preacher. You can't blame nobody but yourself because you have to read the word for yourself. You're responsible to God. It's important as stewards that you maximize your time. Give God your very best. Don't give him your second best and don't let nobody, Lord, hinder you to a point where you get mad, so mad at the person that you don't do what God told you to do. Amen. Am I making myself clear? Yes, sir. All right. You are stewards, and, and God expects you to do great with his resources. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. I've been pretty much all night on just on stewardship because that I tell you, I am going to teach that again. I promise you, I'm going to teach you some on stewardship because it's important as as members of the church. You are not a church member. You are part of the body of Christ, and in that, you need to function with the stuff He has given you to use. So, Whatever you have, whatever talent you have, if you're a good janitor, be a good janitor for the Lord. Amen. If you're a good welcome, welcome people with the joy of the Lord. Do your very, very best. All right. Look, I read somewhere. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm done with it. I know I'm, I'm going too long. Good. There's a there's a uh, a passage that says good and faithful servant. I know we've all heard that. I want to hear him say, servant, well done. I preach that myself, all right? Good and faithful servant. Just look at the context of, of that, what happened there on your spare time. Just take a look at that, and you'll be surprised at what he's asking us to be a servant over. Yes. What are we faithful? Mm. Uh, many times we think about it, it's, it's our faith or something, but just take a look at that. You'll, you'll see some things that'll, that'll help you grow. Is that, I think that's is my, my last one. What's next, Stacey? You can move on. I'm uh, on one more. You have some more. You have some more scriptures, I believe. But... Okay. okay. That's that's, enough. So that's, the, that's your third question right there. And, Go to my third question. Yeah. Right. Is the transgressions of God's law right there? But God's law is done away with. What then are we repenting from? Look at the question very carefully. If sin is the transgression of God's law, what God's law is done away with, what then are we repenting from? Now this should be easy. Y'all asked this last week? You sure did. <laughs> Disobedience. Okay. It's the sin is sin is tragedy. Is God's law done away with? No, sir. No. 
Yeah, that, that was my question. I'm like, is God's law to away with? I'm like, no. <laughs> no. I'm like, what kind of question is this? Do we have to have a theological discussion about this, uh, uh, Pastor Bonner? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a trick question because you're supposed to look at it. I'm trying to tell you, look at it close because law, the law revealed what? Sin. That's what it revealed. So if it, how can it be done away with when it reveals sin? All right? Jesus yeah. came to not not to uh not build the law but to fulfill it, all right. So right. we're repenting, repenting, all right, because in ours in ourselves we have all been disobedient, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're, we're repenting of our sins because sin has mm -hmm. not has not been done away with. The law is not done away with, y'all. We're still dealing with our sins. If we follow the Ten Commandments, which is the law, if it will line up. With the word of God all the way through the New Testament, it lines up. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. Does it? It lines up. So we're still trying to do what God asks. The, the greatest thing that we don't have to hold the law because we're forgiven of all of our sins. We know we can't keep the law. Somebody say Amen. We can't keep the law. It was Jesus. Amen. And through the blood of Jesus, they came. So I just wanted to bring up that. I thought that was a good question that Richard asked on last last week, and I just wanted to, I just wanted to throw that back at you and see uh, how y'all would deal with that. That's all I wanted. To say. Right, that's all I wanted to say about that, Richard. I wanted to throw that in there. Okay. All right, <laughs> Minister Steve. All right. The first question is, uh, when was death first introduced into the world? We got the answer. You guys see that? Did you get the answer on Genesis? <laughs> In the garden. In the garden? And, yeah. and, and so let's look at how it was introduced into the world. Because it wasn't just introduced into the world. And Pastor Bonnet touched on this. He said, touched on this is interesting. <laughs> He touched on the same thing I'm I'm talking about. Uh, if we look at Genesis chapter three, and then we go to verse one, we start off verse one says, now the serpent was more crafty and cunning than any beast of the field uh, and the Lord that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, you may eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, we may, we may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, nor ye shall surely die. So, so death was first introduced mm -hmm. in, in the garden. And the, the serpent tricked mm -hmm. the woman, as we know, we know, and we look at Genesis chapter three, going all the way to verse 14. And some of those other verses, we'll talk, talk about, you know, what happened. But it was introduced in Genesis chapter three, verse three. And if it was introduced then, kind of what Pastor Bonner was just saying, does the does the law still apply as far as what we do? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So far. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. And the, and, yes. yes, it does. And yes, the it result does. was that that death was introduced, and then the punishments of death. You know, where it said the woman will then serve her husband, and the, and the serpent would 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 go on his knees, and he would flow on his belly for the rest of his of, of, of the serpent's life. And what that says to us is that we actually have power over the serpent. Because look at the scripture, which says, so the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all wild animals. You will, crawl on your, you will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And the serpent is a representation of who? Of um, Satan. Satan, amen. So then that, amen. that's we actually have power over the serpent. But we have to take the power, we have to take the authority that God's given us and then not uh not be negligent in our responsibility to the Lord. Any questions or anything on that? Any statements on that? Well, the question says, when was death first introduced? So, 
Yes. When did when I when I was asking myself this question, I was like, did death occur when they touched it or when they ate it? No, it was introduced to it before they even touched it. Before they even death was? Y yeah, because it says, because here's the wisdom of God it says, but God said, you shall not eat of it unless and you shall not eat of the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. So when something just introduced, it's like I introduce you to someone and I introduce you to uh, to a friend of mine. I say, okay, I'm just introducing you to them. Or let me use, see if I can use an example. I say, I have a girlfriend and I say, Richard, she's my girlfriend. I just want to introduce you to her. I don't want her to be your girlfriend. You know, I just want to introduce you to her or I introduce you to someone else. Uh, you know that that you may want to go out and uh and, and they may be single and you may be single say i just want to introduce you to them i didn't tell you to go out now richard take them out on a date and all that stuff i just wanted to introduce you to them now now if you take it further and go on the date and all the other things then that's up to you but i'm just introducing you to them a good example too that came to my mind is that people are introduced to substances but nobody makes them take them it's when they take them is when the when it has the effect on their life right so i have a choice so, so, and that's yeah. exactly what they he said to them it's an introduction to say look if you do this the results of this is that yeah. you will surely die nobody mm -hmm. died yet but mm -hmm. let me introduce you to this that if you do this that you're going you're going to die if, if Richard, you drive your car 100 miles an hour <laughs> on uh, Highway 1, going to some of those cliffs, you are going to, let me introduce you something, you're going to go off them cliffs. I'm going to tell you, mm -hmm. I'm just letting you know what's, what's going to come ahead, what's ahead of you if you do this particular thing. So we got to understand that, that death has not come yet, but nope. it is saying, I'm going to introduce it to you, I'm making you aware of something. That's right. That I have a based on if you do this. So mm -hmm. everybody get that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Next question. Boom. How do we receive long life and what does it mean? Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Honor your mother and father so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. And what does it mean to live long? Uh, um, not, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, because there's some people out here that's living 116 years. Is that long? That's a long time, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Bible only, uh, the, the Bible really says if we live a certain uh, length of time that we've done well. And, how, and what's that length of time? Uh, 70 years altogether? 70 years. Yeah. 70 years, yeah. A long time. And what I wanted to get in, when, and what I want to go back on the series is this, the honoring of your father and your mother gives us long satisfied lives hmm. when we have a tendency to disobey our parents sometimes sometimes that makes life a little bit miserable you know but when we honor them then god honors us for what we've done i'm always reminded of my parents and i think of my i think of my parents for me personally and i say i think i've made it this far in life not because i've been so good or so great but because i've honored my parents Irregardless if I disagree with them or not, yeah. but God has blessed me to be a parent. So now, it, at, now as at this age here, and, and hoping to see many more years, God has honored me because I I honored my parents. And this was one of the what? Uh, Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. Uh, one of the Ten Commandments. Yes. Yeah. Still good. To well, I got something interesting from the media about. In, the, in this vein right here, Quentin, Quentin Tarantino uh, mm -hmm. said that he wasn't going to give his mother a dollar of the money that he earned from being a um, screenwriter and director because she didn't mm -hmm. believe in him. And a matter of fact, she tried to talk about it doing it and gave him a hard time about it. So he made uh -huh. it in his mind when he was 12 
Like, well, he, he wasn't going to give her none of the money at all. Wow. Is that honoring his mother? Oh, no, for sure not. Now, now let me ask a question. If he didn't give her any money, did he do anything else for her? I think it said in the article that he helped her out with some kind of tax bill, but that was about it. He wasn't going to buy her no house or no car, or give her no money. Other than okay. Yes. Sure. Yeah. I, I would think, and if somebody else can, you can answer this if you feel like. From my perspective, I would say, if he's not honoring his mother, that means not just with his finances, but with his, with everything, then he's not honoring his parents. And 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 more so, it has to do with more, more about loving them and respecting them more than it has to do with money. I want to say in, in that it's about relationship. Honor mm -hmm. your father and your mother. It's, it's about the relationship that we have with our mother and father, where there are things that we can still disagree with them, but we honor them because of who they are. And many times, if you look at the Old Testament, it was the position of that mother and father, that the mother and father, that they, the child always would honor. And I know mm -hmm. where, where, I, where I grew up in the south, deep south of Texas, that's why it was always honor. When we think about that, not just your mom and your dad, but your neighbors. It was that's just right. something we would use the term, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Yes, sir, no, sir. Never call them by their first names. Uh, or because we honored them, it was a respect thing. And I think God is asking us to respect our parents, you know that, that as you respect your parents, we, he will honor he will honor us in that, and he will bless us with a longer life if we respect our yeah. parents. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe. Amen. Anybody else? No other comments or questions. My brother's going here. What, what about you? What about your parents within your life? Wow. You still, you still, you still. How do you honor somebody? Go ahead, somebody. Huh? How, how do you honor someone? So, so your mom and your dad had a child. Uh huh. Your mom stayed in Texas. Your dad came to California. Mm hmm. Do you honor him? He ain't never said nothing to your mama to help you. Do you still honor him? Yeah, so that's that's yes. hard. That's yes. hard right there. What's so hard about it? What's so hard about it? Because the person wasn't there for you. Well, what does the word say? The word doesn't say if he was there for you, if he didn't, if he didn't pay child for you. Where is that in there? Is that in there? That's he right. Us to do what? Honor. Mm -hmm. This is what God is asking us to do based on the relationship we have with Christ. Because I can forgive my dad or my mother for what they did not do. And based on the word of God, I am to give them honor. Mm -hmm. I know I hit some. I know I hit some sore thumbs there. I know I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I saw some green lights come on and go off. <laughs> come on, all in the front. I'm here. I'm, I'm listening. Tell me I'm wrong. Go on, Tim Brown. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> oh, no, I can't. I can't tell you that uh, that you're wrong. I I can only speak about my own familial experience, and yes. you know, my dad. Um, I have older siblings, um, and my dad didn't raise um, my oldest brother and my oldest sister, but yet mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're they still honored him. They still respected him. Um, mm -hmm. And um, they still, you know, called him daddy and and as such. And he demanded that respect, but there was um, there was never any disrespect from them. And um, I, I think by being believers and honoring that, it helped to heal and mend relationship as well. Amen. Amen. So um, so so th there's healing when there's that when you do what the Bible says here and honoring your mother and father in spite of or despite. Uh, how you may have been treated or mistreated. So, yeah. That's right. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> that's right, Tim. Good, good, good example. And Anybody else we, want to take a shot? I think that's what we need to teach that. We make sure we teach that to our children who, who fathers or mothers didn't do right by them. We need to teach that, that because of the body of Christ. Christ loved us through so much that he, mm -hmm. uh, we are to we extend that love back to them. And, you know, that even goes to with divorces. Sometimes you get divorced. 
and the mom may say something bad about the dad or dad may say something yeah. about the mom. So therefore the child grows up with a complex against that other parent. But the reality is once the child gets to a certain level, to a certain age, to a certain um, uh, age, I say, then it's up to them to do, especially if they have a relationship with the Lord, it's up for them, it's up to them to do the right thing versus listening to the parent. I get it. You know, and dishonoring one over the other. It says, because the scripture says, honor your father and your mother. It doesn't say one or the other. It says, honor both of them, irregardless of the situation. It says, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. So God is giving me something for my obedience for my obedience to him. Amen. All right. Third question, Rich. I mean, third question, Stacy. Stacy. Yeah, I'm sorry. Who we bound, who will be bound for the first time and for how many years? Revelations 20 and 2. And it reads as follows. It says, he seized the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. Found in Revelations chapter 20, verse 2. And then he goes on, actually in Revelations 20, all the all in all of chapter 20 is very interesting to read because he's bound for a thousand years, then he's loosed again. Yeah. And then he's bound again for another thousand years yes. in Revelation chapter 20. And so, uh, and at the end, though, Satan is defeated. And so if you ever get, get a chance, read Revelation chapter 20, and I think it's really a good, a good chapter. And that's it for my questions. Anybody have anything to say on those? Or any comments? In reading, in reading, that, in reading that book, your foot needs to be grounded in your faith, okay? You got sure. to know you got to know who God is in your life. It, mm -hmm. It'll confuse you and scare you at the same time. So, but you got to make sure you're grounded and know at the end, Satan will be bound. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. All right. And, and and one thing that's interesting about this, if you look in Genesis chapter three, the Satan is cursed. In Revelation, Satan is cursed again. Cursed. So mm -hmm. from the beginning of the book all the way to the end. He's a, yeah, he's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. All right. My turn. Mm -hmm. are there any quite, Richard, are there any questions before? before everybody understand it? Everybody okay? God sent Moses to free the Israelites, then harden Pharaoh's heart so that he would let the Israelites leave, making it necessary for God to send the plagues on the Egyptians. Why did God choose to go through all that stress? <laughs> Doesn't that pretty much negate Pharaoh's free will in the matter and punish, it, it, punish the Egyptians because of it? Long drawn out question. That's right. Come on, y'all. So I, I want to talk. Go ahead. Come on, y'all. <laughs> why did God choose to go through all of that stress? I mean, why would he? What was? What was he doing? Because he, it, out of all the ways he could have did it, he chose to do it this way. <laughs> I think he I think he wanted to prove to everyone that he is God and that he can do whatever he wants to do. Mm. Mm. Wow. You know that that that's a good point. I, I've been thinking about this a lot actually, because <laughs> people question uh, why does God allow this, or why does God do this? Mm -hmm. And I, and 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 we just really we will never have the mindset of God. We yeah, will. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm like we, we we are questioning something that's beyond our comprehension. It's something that's unfathomable, unimaginable, um, as to the purposes. Uh, to his purpose and, and what and what he wants to do and when he chooses to do it. And I was thinking about this today because 
we have the power to create things. And with that power to create things in our manly power, we also have we have the power to destroy those things. Mm -hmm. So why don't we believe that God who created us could destroy us or take us out or do what he wants to do because he's God? I just don't understand why people don't understand that. Tim, I think in that they want to limit God based on how they think about themselves. They yes. Think, what they can do, I can only go this far. And to them, God may be going a little further, but they don't understand God goes way beyond our comprehension mm-hmm. because he is God. So yeah. God is not man. God is not a man yeah. that he should lie. I'm like, he come on. Yeah. So, so, Richard, I have a question within your question. Okay. You, you know I would. Yes. Richard asked the question, why did God choose to go through all that stress? Where did you read that God was stressing? <laughs> I didn't read it anywhere. That, that, um... <laughs> <laughs> A, a Richard was putting it in those uh, humanly manly terms of, uh, because to, to our perception, it, it's stressful. Why would That's God, d- to my point, that actually echoes my point. We got to stop thinking of God like he's man. Yeah. yeah. There ain't no stress. <laughs> ain't no stress. Uh, really, there's man. no stress. It's just God getting his work done. It's the yes. way he- He's choosing his work done. His, his work was going to be done. He said, I'm going to be glorified in this. I'm just going to tell him to do it. That's right. And we got to look at that in our lives. Sometimes God put us through things because we yes. just won't automatically give him the praise, the glory, the acknowledgement he, he wants from us. So he loves us. But he'll put us through some things. And I need you to acknowledge who I am. Stop acting like you're doing this all by yourself. You ain't doing this. So. And, and, and that brings up a question. Does God then still allow things to occur to us because of our disobedience? Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Because, Indeed. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because uh, the question really is a good question. It says, God sent Moses to... To free the Israelites, then harden Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the Israelites leave. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and, it's, and it's interesting how God gives us, he sent Jesus Christ for salvation to free us from sin. But yet sometimes we become hard headed and we disobedient. And then he God allows out. things to happen to us so that we could, mm-hmm. okay, God, I, I, I think I really need to submit because I really didn't do it the first time. Well, that was, that, I like, that's why I like this question, because it's really God's sovereignty. He he wants to. Yeah. I mean, I thought it really interesting that he had to harden um, sure. Pharaoh's yeah. heart. I mean, why did he have mm-hmm. to harden his heart? Mm-hmm. And was he going to let him go? <laughs> wow. Yes. Before anything happened? Yes. Yes. At some point, I believe he was going to let him go. I do believe that, but I think that that God kept changing, hardening his heart in the process because every time he hardened his heart, it, it's as if Pharaoh wanted to think he was in control. Mm-hmm. He was running the show, and God was really showing him, you're not running the show. I'm running the show. That's right. And, and every time these things would come on, when these plagues and stuff come on, where would he turn to? Hmm. He turned to Moses, really, to tell him, tell your God to, to stop or make this go away. Really saying, you know, and then he gets God hard his heart and said, let's do something else. Because he really don't believe that I'm in charge. That's what I, that's how yeah. I look at this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And any other comments, questions? Before I, have on? One, I have one more. I have one more. In the pandemic, do you think that there are Christians 
non-Christians whose hearts have been hardened? Yes. Yes. Yeah, mm. yeah I do. Especially with people who um, are choosing not to get the vaccine for whatever reason. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it may be some good reasons um, that they're choosing not to, but ultimately, to me, it seems that their heart has been hardened towards it. Well, I, I think oh, that's very good. That's very good because I think I've seen that. Uh, I've seen that, Richard, outside of the vaccine. Mm. I've seen. I think people has hardened. Some people hardened has got hard outside of the vaccine. Has nothing to do with the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. I want to get one more question. Go to the next question. Um, All right. The next, the next slide. Okay, was Adam's sin the original or was Satan's? Mm. <laughs> was Adam's sin the original or was Satan's? I think it was Adam's because he had been charged to not eat from the tree. Mm -hmm. And I don't see anywhere where God was talking to the serpent at that time. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Like mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Mm. Uh, Minister Steve? Well, well, and Diane hit it, and she hit it on the on the head because, you know, if we look at the scripture, you know, he said when God created, and said the serpent was just more crafty, and he just convinced, he convinced Eve to eat, and then she gave to Adam, and then because, and then God said because of Adam, because of what happened to Adam, then that's this, that's where the sin started right there. But wasn't 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 Satan's rebellion sin in itself? <laughs> well, that's a good question. We're not talking about just the garden. We talk, it says, was Adam yeah. sin the original or Satan's? And, okay. and Satan's rebellion was, that was to me, that was the original sin. Uh huh. Hmm. I mean, there were a host of angels who were expelled along with him. Yes, so, uh, so, you know, that, and that happened before the fall of Adam. So, that is and correct. Eve. That is yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Mr. Robert saying, would sin have even entered the world if he had not done what he did? Hmm. No, it would not have entered because uh, when we look, the scripture says when you ate of when when he, and God gave them the command, he says, when you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Prior to that, they didn't they there was no knowledge of good or evil. That is correct. And he said your eyes will be open and then they will have the knowledge of good and evil. So and prior to that, even though Satan was craftier, there was still no knowledge of sin. The, the knowledge came, uh, he was kicked out of heaven, right? Mm -hmm. Right? But there was no disobedience on the part of man. Mm -hmm. While in the garden, he was still obeying what God had said because mm -hmm. all he knew was truth. That's you right. Know, but the place that Adam and, and Eve are in, it is a perfect place. That's right. There is no knowledge of sin. Nope. If they hadn't eaten of that tree, you and I would have been living forever in the garden mm -hmm. without sin. That's right. But it's when they the disobedience came, mm -hmm. then sin, the knowledge of sin came. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. All right. Any more? Any other comments? Question. Everybody understand that? Yep. yep. 
Okay, I'm gonna send y'all a test, and y'all want you to do the test by. Can you have a test to me by tomorrow morning? I got one more question. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it, Stacy? <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I guess I won't get a chance to ask. Uh, well, we'll get that next week, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, what is it? Is the next one the next one? Oh. Does Jesus possess the nature of Adam after the fall or before the fall? Wow. I Actually, I, I, we need to wait till next week because that's pretty <laughs> a deep question. Yeah. It's going to take a lot of time. Yeah, they well, thank a you for moment. showing us, Stacey. Um, yeah. Thank everybody for your participation tonight in our uh, Bible study. Um, all of your um, comments and um, questions and answers were greatly appreciated. Um, are there any prayer requests? Ain't nobody to call. Pray for a minute. Continue to pray for Minister Tim and uh, and for everybody. There's been several people that have contracted COVID. You know, for all of those who have contracted COVID, pray for all of those folks. Yeah. It, it, it's it's a wildfire out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And pray that uh, God will keep us safe. Yes. Amen. Amen. Pray for me. I'm back at work, and um, they're talking about the student body is about well, the people in the dorms are about ninety percent vaccinated. But as, mm. as far as campus wide, I think it's only like 49%. And so anybody can walk into the cafes, even though oh. we're going to be, you know, washing our hands and social distancing. Mm -hmm. um, the staff, it's pretty going to be no holes barred back in the cafeteria, with the exception of them having to wear masks, um, like any of us going into a restaurant until it's time for them to eat. So be wow. prepared. Amen. Okay. All right, I'm, in, I'm encouraging y'all, you know, to continue to wear your mask. Uh, it's very important that we do that. I don't care where you go. Uh, it's important that you wear your mask. I want to thank Steve and Richard for carrying on last week. I was in, in Florida and Louisiana last week, and I'm telling you, they weren't wearing nothing, nothing. I'm saying only things in the way it was terrible. So, uh, but I, I wore my mask and stuff where I went, and I have been tested since I've been back, and uh, mm -hmm. negative. So I just thank God for that. Uh, so Man. I want us to be careful and let's be safe. Let's be safe and be wise, and and all of that, and continue to pray, pray for one another. And we, as we come back to church, we're going to do it in a safe manner. Amen. They're gonna, they're gonna be take, taking your temperature, and uh, we're gonna make sure we. We wash our, our hands, sanitize ourselves, and do what's right. And service, um, we're not having long services. I'm telling you, we, we started 10.30, and we all by 12. I know we all by 12, amen, because I'm closing at by 12. So uh, I want you all to be encouraged to come. And um, if you're not a part of the church, I encourage you, join the church. Don't just sit on the sideline. Uh, but it's important that you become part of a ministry because you are a steward. God has the expectations of you, and there's some in some church you can help. If we're looking for a perfect church, there's not one here on earth. Amen. I'll say amen by myself. So uh, it's important that we do that. So we go to the church to work to help to do the work of the ministry. And you're working for Christ. You're not working for the preacher. No deacon. You're working for Christ. And you keep that focus, then folks won't hurt you as bad. Amen. When they, when stuff go up, you won't you won't be leaving so quickly. So it's important that we do that. All right. Remember, we have Bible study every uh, Tuesday and Thursdays from 6.30 to 7. And on Saturdays from 9 to 9.30, I encourage you to join in or send prayer requests to us. And we pray for it. I'm telling you, I know uh, through the power of prayer, God is helping. I'm telling you, there's a covering. And I just thank him for his covering. And we just give God praise and just keep on praying. God is looking out for us. I got some more stories I'm going to tell you all about about what happened to me in, in Alabama and in Mississippi and in Florida. I'm telling you, God, God is covering on my life. He's completely on my life, and I know he's covering me. Because things just don't happen to happen to me while I was there. Uh, 
if God wasn't there. I know. He just let me know. I got you. Hey, I said, all right, Lord. And so God is good. So I just want to be encouraged to know that, you know, let's stay with God. And all I need is acknowledge him and he will direct our path. Um, I want to make sure that the format that we've chosen, are we kind of going with some question and answer format, uh, kind of breaking it up a little bit. We're going to do some case studies and then we're going to do, uh, uh, we're going to go back and finish um, third John. Uh, so we'll be done with that. But uh, we're kind of trying to break it up a little bit and challenging you. And what we try to do is we want you to answer the question, ask questions, and you don't have to be right. It's okay to be wrong. We're trying to learn. We're all learning here. And um, if we don't have an answer, we're going to dig and try to find it. We're going to ask somebody else. So we want to be encouraged uh, that as we study, and we're studying to show ourselves approved. We're workman, all right? We're trying to get the word right, that when we... Give the truth we divided into other folks' rights. So I want to encourage you, you know, if you don't know the answer, or you have questions, you have concerns, say something so you can be in, enlightened and, give, and grow in the body of Christ. We don't want you to stay the same. God didn't call you to be the same. Wait, grow, grow, grow. All right? All right. All right. Nothing else. That's about it for a word of prayer. Thank you all for being on the call tonight. Father, we come in the name of Jesus, thanking you for your glory and your honor. We thank you for your presence. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in us, that resides there. Thank you, God, that is in control of our lives, God. And we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit, God. We want to make sure that you're happy with what we're doing, how we're conducting ourselves. Lord, that whatever we do, we will glorify your name. We thank you for who you are. You mean so much to us. Thank you, Lord, for the increase tonight in our Bible study, Lord. Grow us, Lord, and because what we want to do is, Lord, to glorify your name. That whatever we do, God, we want to make sure we're in the background and you in the foreground. We just thank you. We bless you, Lord. Bless Tim tonight. Bless those that are sick. Bless those that are going through the COVID experience, God. Bring them out. I know you're able, God. And we just ask you that you love those who are struggling with taking the vaccine. I'm just asking you, regulate their minds. Help them, God, to realize, God, if they take it, Lord, they'd be better off than not taking it. We ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we have all this stuff in their mindset of conspiracy. Lord, Lord again, God, I'm asking you, help them to regulate their mind. Help them to realize that I can do all things. Through Christ, who gives me the strength, that I trust you, God, that, Lord, the vaccine will be all right because you, God, are orchestrating my life. I praise you. I honor you. Thank you for Bible study tonight. This is our prayer. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, we pray. And everyone said amen. 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 Thank you all so amen. much. Good to see you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. Good to see you, Tim. <laughs> Good night.